In this tutorial, I'll show you how to grow procedural fungus over any object. But if you'd like a shortcut, you can download my procedural fungus growth system from Gumroad. Link in the description. So you want to make some fungus. First, I'm going to set the scene scale. In units, make length centimeters. We'll be working on a small scale. Now, add a monkey. I'm going to scale him down so he's about 40 centimeters wide, which is about the size of a human head. I want to be able to draw a line and have branches automatically grow off of it and engulf anything in its path. Step one, add a Bezier curve, call it source curve. Tab into edit mode and delete the vertices. Now go into drawing mode and draw a line. Let's add our fungus growth object. Make a cube or anything really. Call it fungus growth. And now go into the geometry nodes workspace and make a new geometry node set. Pin that one and remove the group input for now. Grab your source curve and drop it into the setup. Now I want to instance curves along this curve. So drag out geometry, make an instance on points node. And for instance, I want a curved line. Connect the output to geometry and set the Z value to 0 and the end Y value to 5. Now we've got some curves. What if we want more? Well, make a resample curve node and drop that in. Now we've got 10. Also make this geometry relative. What if I want these instances to align to the source curve. Make a tangent node. Make it an align Euler to vector. And plug rotation into a rotation. Make it the y-axis. And now these curves should align. We're just taking a vector value and converting it into a rotation value for this input. I'm going to add a random direction to these curves. So, move this out here, make a random value node, make a combine XYZ node, on the Z axis, and then Make a vector math node. And we are going to add a random value to the z of this rotation. Now these curves will randomly rotate. Make a minimum negative one, and they'll randomly rotate in either direction. You can more easily control this value by making a value node. Plug value into maximum and then add a math node. Multiply negative one and plug that value into minimum. And now if you drag the slider you can add random divergence. I'm going to leave that at 0.5. Now after instance on points, realize instances. I want to make another branch at the end of these branches. So make some space and duplicate this entire setup. Connect it up. 
now we've got a second branch but I'm not seeing the first one so make a join geometry node and connect this first setup to the geometry now these uh, the second branch is coming off of both ends I just want it off the tip of the last branch so make an endpoint selection node plug selection into selection and make start size 0 I'm going to resample this curve before I instance the second time and by doing that I can turn up the end size and have more branches and if I mess with this value I can clump the branches at the end or spread them out more just by changing the number of points I'm going to leave it at 8 now I want these branches to just keep on branching so I'm going to group this second setup right after resample curve and hit control G call this branches duplicate this six times and each time plug the geometry output into the join geometry as well now you've got a bunch of branches we can make this a little less crazy by adjusting the number of branches and adjusting the length I want this first branch to not really contribute anything I just wanted to set a direction and a number of branches so I'm gonna make the Y value like 0.01 centimeters that way this first branch here will start from the main curve now I want to be able to control the number of branches from the outside of this group so I'm going to drag end size into the group input and I'm going to go into the group view over here and call this branch number <clears throat> if you tab back out we can now change the branch number per iteration so make the first branch number one and then the second branch number can be whatever you want it to be I want to be able to control all of these secondary branches together so tabbing back in I'm going to duplicate the group input and plug branch number directly from group input into group output now if you tab back out you can pipe this value through starting with the second and third branch now I can set the number of branches for these last iterations independently I'm gonna set it to 2 for speed and if at any point you want to control the number of branches on their own you can just disconnect this and get more branches I also want each new branch to get shorter so going into branches the value for the length of the branch is the end of this curve line so drag end out and make a combine XYZ node and type 0.05 into the Y value this is in generic units or meters whereas this is in centimeters so it's a little confusing <clears throat> drag Y into group input and then call that branch length and now just like for the branch number I'm going to go to the end and pipe branch length from group input into group output and then tabbing out I'm going to pipe this value all the way through now you can change branch length from this first node tabbing back in here's how you make the branches shrink per iteration make a math node 
drop it into branch length, and then make it a multiply. Now they will be multiplied down per iteration, right now halfway, but I'm gonna make it 0.85, and now the ending branches shrink down. Now at any point, you could tap into edit mode of your source curve, delete your vertices, and draw new lines. And that's really satisfying. You can even write your name. Next, I'll show you how to mesh these curves and grow them on over time. First, at the very end, make a curve to mesh. Make profile curve a curve circle. Give it a radius of 0.5 centimeters and then make the resolution 12. Now jumping into branches group, make yourself some room at the end after realize instances and we're going to do a set curve radius in here. Make a spline parameter node and plug factor into radius. Now we've got the curves going from a value of zero to one because that's what the factor does. One thing with the profile curve is fill caps is a good idea to turn on. Now I'm going to resample my curves to give them more resolution along their length. Change it to length and make it 0.05 centimeters. Now make a float curve. Drop that in here and this will determine, the start will determine how thick they are at the beginning and I want to make this bulbous shape at the end and then it shrinks back down. Now how do you grow these curves on over time? All we need to do is add a value to this factor. Make a math node, drop it in, and if you scrub this value, a value of one will make them disappear. But they're all growing on at once. So I want each branch to come off the last one. We can do that by offsetting the growth value per iteration. So grab a group input node and plug value in call this growth now go to the end and pipe the growth value from input into output and then tabbing out connect the growth values to each other now tabbing back in make another math node here and drop it into growth and add a value of one. Now we're adding a value of one per branch. So if we tab back out and mess with this first growth value, we get the correct growth that we were hoping for. Now I want each of these branches to grow one after the other along this curve in the direction that I drew it. We can do that by further offsetting the growth value with the ID of the source curves, which are here. So we need to capture that information with a capture attribute node. Make it float spline, make an ID node, and plug that into value. Now tab into branches and I'm going to go over to our growth setup make some space and duplicate this add node this second value gets plugged into group input and call that source spline ID now plug, plug source spline ID from input into output and tab back out and pipe this through. Now plug 
the attribute we captured into source spline ID. And if you mess with this growth value, we have an offset. You can see these source curves here are being are contributing to the geometry, but we don't want that. So I'm just going to control, right click, and drag to remove them. It looks like we're losing our taper when we grow these on. So I'm going to add a second curve radius in the branches group. Duplicate set curve radius. And we want to make it the radius multiplied by a spline parameter node. Plug radius in and factor into the other. Multiply and then plug that value into radius. In between factor and multiply, grab the float curve and plug that in. I want to make this, I want to mesh this source curve and grow it on as well. So before resample curve, I want to make a dot and connect that to the join geometry node. Let's make a set curve radius, make a spline parameter, plug factor into radius, and it looks like it's tapering the wrong way. But if you make a reverse curve node, drop it in before, and then duplicate that and drop it in after, we can taper it in the right direction. I want to make a float curve for this as well, so I can make it taper pretty slowly. And I also want to resample the curve so it has the same resolution as everything else as I do these operations. So make it 0.05. It's a little thick, so make a math node and multiply by 0.5. Now, how do I grow this? Well, I want to be able to plug the same growth value into this curve as I plug into these curves, but right now, to grow them on, I need it to be a value of negative 15. That's because we've offset the growth value by so much. I'm going to make a group input node, and I'm going to reveal the growth parameter in our actual modifier. So I want it to be a slider. So grab any slider value, plug it in, and call that growth. Now the slider goes from 0 to 1. And I need to remap that value to work for this growth parameter. So drag that out and call it and make a map range node. Right now 1 is no growth. So I want 0 to be no growth. So 0 needs to become 1. And then negative 15 is full growth. So I want 1 to become negative 15. From max 1 2 max negative 15. Turn off clamp and then plug result into growth and nothing should change. But if you mess with this growth slider, it should grow on. Now you can duplicate the group input node and just add this value into the factor but nothing happens. That's because we want it to start not grown at all. So if you turn growth to zero so we can see, add a value of negative one, 
and if you turn on growth that source curve should be growing as well I wanted to get a little bit ahead of everything else so I'm going to not subtract one I'm going to subtract 0.6 and now it gets a little bit ahead of everything else next I'll show you how to grow this fungus over any object so first make a new collection call it surface object surface objects and then put your monkey in there and then make a plane for the ground I'm gonna give this fungus a different material so it stands out from the plane so make a new material and go down to viewport display and make the color orangish now make a set material node and select that material now select your source curve tab into edit mode delete all the vertices and let's draw a new curve but first click on surface projection now draw a curve over your monkey head and you should have fungus growing over the monkey next we'll set the position of these branches to the monkey head I'll add a subsurface modifier to the monkey real quick and shade smooth tabbing into the branches group right after resample curve let's make some room make a set position note and then a geometry proximity node plug position into position and then grab the group input and plug target into the group input tabbing back out we now have this we can grab our surface objects collection and drop it into our system make it relative and make a realize instances node plug instances into there and plug geometry into target tabbing back into branches we can now go to the end and like for everything else we need to pipe target from input into output and then do so for each group instance there's some artifacting here and these branches are very straight so I want to make the wrapping a little more accurate as well as making the branches look a little bit better at the same time so I'm going to split each individual segment into six smaller segments and set position each time so tabbing into branches before resample curve let's make a curve to mesh node and then a mesh to curve and then in this mesh part I'm going to extrude the mesh and I want to extrude vertices now this is going to make it go crazy and I probably should have turned off something before I did that <clears throat> tapping back out let's turn off all the branches but one change our offset scale to something small what I want to do is make this branch a sixth of the length that it was and then extrude it five more times to make it the same length so in this branch length area make a math node and divide by six now this extrude mesh is extruding from both vertices we only want to extrude from the endpoint so make a capture attribute node we have to capture these attributes while it's still a curve it'll be a boolean point and grab an endpoint selection node turn start size to zero and plug in attribute into selection 
Now we're just extruding one end. I want this extrusion to go in the tangent direction of the line. So we need another capture attribute node. This time it will be a vector. Make a tangent node. Plug that into value and then plug that attribute into the offset. Now after this first extrusion, I want to set the position. In fact, I want to set the position before and after I extrude. This is just making the wrapping of the meshes more accurate. So grab this set position set up here, duplicate it, and drop it in before our extrusion, and then duplicate it to after. Disconnect this group input for now, and then select this entire setup starting at capture attribute and hit control G. This group will be called extrude. Tabbing back into that group, I'm going to output the tar geometry proximity target into the group input, and then we can plug the geometry from group input into there. Now if I duplicate this, nothing happens because we need to pipe this information through. So group input copied and plug target from group input into group output. And then just like before, pipe that information through. And now duplicate this until you have five. And connect them. Now we should be left with some line segments that are the same length as they started out. I'm going to tab back out into the main group by selecting this group input node and turn our branches back on with M. Tab back into branches. It looks like our branches aren't shrinking each iteration anymore. That's because we're not using the branch length value anymore for these. So we need to grab the branch length value and use it to drive this offset scale for the extrude mesh. So let's pipe our offset scale into the group input and then tabbing back out, our branch length value is 0.05. So we need to take our branch length and divide it by five. And then we can plug that value into offset scale. Now, if we pipe this offset scale value through, we should get our branch iteration shrinking. Now that I've split these up into smaller segments, I can alter their direction per segment as well. So going back into extrude, I can take this curved tangent and alter it by a random value. I'm going to grab a normal node and I'm just going to make a vector math node and add the curve normal to the curve tangent. And we get this crazy spinning effect. But if you were to take the curve normal and make another vector math node, make it a scale node, and multiply it down to like 0.02 or 0.2, we get this curving effect, but they're only curving in one direction. To curve them in either direction, make a random value node. Hopefully you see where I'm going here. Set minimum to negative one. Oops, negative one. And plug value into scale. And now they will curve in either direction by a range from one to negative one. Now to control this value better, Grab the group input, plug the maximum 
into the group input. We'll call this curviness. And then make a math node. And multiply by negative one. Plug that into minimum. And now if we pipe curviness through, connect them all up, we can control the curviness of them all together. And something like 0.5 looks a little more reasonable. Now these curves have some sharp edges. I can smooth the curves out before the resampling by making a set spline type, set it to Bezier, Bezier, and then a set handle type, left and right to auto, and that will make the handles smooth. One more thing I'd like to do is make these curves random lengths. So we can do that with a trim curve node, make a random value node, and plug the value into the end. So now these curves will be trimmed from 0 to 1, but the minimum which should probably be like 0.33, so they go from a third of their length to the full length. And next we need to set the position of this source curve as well. So let's tab out into the main area. We'll grab our collection info setup and move it over here. And right after we resample the curve. Let's make a set position node. And you know the drill, make a geometry proximity node. Plug geometry into target. And now that should be attached. It's a little thick, so I'm gonna actually go to my curve radius setup over here and make this multiply like 0.25 instead. Now I'm going to show you how to add noise to these curves for a little more detail. So let's tab into the branches setup. After we've trimmed curve, resampled the curve, set the position, right before we set the curve radius, make a little room, and we will duplicate this set position, drop it in here. I want to make a noise texture node, drag color out and make a vector math node, and add a value of negative 0.5, and plug vector into offset. That noise is a bit large, so I'm going to turn the scale way up to make it more detailed, like 50. And I want to turn the strength down. So duplicate the vector math node and make it a scale node. So now we can control the intensity of the noise. Something like 0.05. And then we want to set position to the target geometry after this as well. So duplicate the setup and drop it in afterwards. I'm going to make my scale something like 75 and then the intensity 0.02. That looks good here, but at the end it's getting a little crazy. I want to scale down the amplitude of the noise per iteration as well. Let's grab a group input node and I want to plug the scale of the noise into there as well as this scale for the intensity of the noise. So, call the first scale noise scale, and the second one noise strength. And then we'll go to the end and we'll plug our noise scale and strength into the output. And then tabbing out, we can connect all of these up. And now, I can multiply the noise strength by a value each iteration. So if I just duplicate this multiply node I already had, 0.85 looks decent. And then I want to also manipulate the value of the noise scale. 
that didn't do what I wanted. I want it more detailed at the end. So if I change this multiply to a divide, that will do the trick because the noise scale works differently. Maybe noise strength should go down even more. So maybe 0.66 for a third. I'm also going to apply noise to this source curve. So duplicate this noise setup. Control C and let's tab out and go to our curve right after we set position let's add the noise setup and then we will set position again maybe 75 is a little small so we'll do 50 for that one Finally, I'm going to show you how you can make these branches not intersect with each other as much and start stacking up. So it really becomes an issue when you turn up this branch number and you really fill out all these branches, they all start to intersect. So the trick is we're going to add these branches as geometry into our surface object. So tab into branches, go to the very end. And right here, split this off and let's make another set curve radius. Because we want to set the curve radius to a static radius that never changes because if it's changing, these will be jittering all over the place per frame. Make a curve to mesh. And for profile curve, make a curve circle, resolution of 8, and then this is where the magic happens. Let's make some space. Drag these all up. I'm going to merge this these curves into the target geometry. So make a join geometry node. plug that in there and then plug mesh into the geometry and now we have some stacking happening and you can control how much it's stacking by the radius of this curve so 50 that'll be half as much and there you have it that's how you grow procedural fungus over any object with one stroke of your cursor or mouse or pen or whatever you're using Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.